Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now, no fancy introduction for this video, no flying logos. I just want to quickly talk about Haggis tools. And hopefully the tools will kind of speak for themselves. Now I'll go over some of the main features, I'll go over some of the UI elements, and I'll give you a couple of quick keyboard shortcuts. Now when it comes to the bulk of the operations, most of this gets done in the HBR tools menu. And this is where we can do things like drop down an empty, parent selected, we can lock selections, we can use the animation tools, stuff like this. On the top right hand side, we can see here we have some basic UI elements. Now, this one at the left hand side will toggle the quad view, nice and easy. This one here will actually open up a floating window. Now this floating window can actually be specified by you. So for example, if we go into HBR tools, system tools, you can see here, we can select any kind of window editor that we want. So we could maybe change this to something like the shader node tree, and that'll actually bring up the shader node. And this is great if you're working on something like a dual screen. We also have enable name, so we can toggle the names on objects. And this is brilliant if you're working with lots of data or your scene's pretty damn heavy. And we also have lock camera view, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, one of my favourites is we can actually toggle the gizmos on and off here. And this just makes it a lot easier, to be honest. Saves you getting into this menu and selecting everything. And it's good for transforming, scaling, and rotation. Now, down the bottom right hand side, we have skip keyframes. So let's say, for example, we want to skip keyframes by every 10. We could put in 10. Now, watch the timeline. It'll basically skip every 10th keyframe. And this obviously goes in the negative direction. And this is good if you're doing something like stop motion or you need to keyframe every 10th frame, 20th frame, whatever. Now that's some of the basic UI elements. If we press Alt and right click, you can see here it actually brings up the quick menu for animation tools. This is where we can copy and paste things like location, rotation and scale. Now another very quick tip is if you press Control, Alt and Numpad 1, this will actually align the camera to the perspective viewport. Now the difference between doing this in Control Alt and Numpad 0, it actually locks the camera. So this means we're automatically inside of the camera view, we're locked, means we can quickly start animating. And it's also the reason why this toggles here as well, we can quickly unlock it and jump back into perspective view. Now that's a very brief overview of the UI elements. I didn't want to add things like panels on the right hand side, I wanted to kind of keep your real estate pretty open to be honest, but I felt having things like skip keyframe down here is beneficial. Now, like I mentioned, most of the bulk operations are actually in the main menu. So let's select both of these objects, let's go to HBR Tools, and the first thing that we have is Duplicate and Join. And what this essentially does is it duplicates the objects and it joins them together. Nice and quick, and we can do this for multiple objects, so let's duplicate it and join it again, and now we have a whole bunch. Perfect. So let's say for example we want to add a material, so we'll quickly add a basic material, we'll just make this something like green, we can then use copy material and unlink the data. So what we can do is we can select the objects that we'd like to copy to and then select the target object. We can go to Haggis tools, copy material and unlinked. And this is perfect because it unlinks it means we can manipulate these materials individually. Let's move on to the next one. Convert to mesh, what this essentially does is it converts a curve to mesh but it keeps it original. We also have Create text in edit mode. Now when you create a text object, it'll automatically enter you into edit mode. Nice and easy. Now auto smooth is something that I use quite a lot in production. So let's quickly drop down something like a cylinder. Now generally what you'll do is you'll right click on it, you'll shade smooth, you'll get this horrible kind of shading error. And what you'll then do is you'll go to the normal maps and you'll enable auto smoothing. Now what this actually does is it does it in one operation. So rather than go to the menu up here, we can actually press Alt and right click and you can see here Auto Smooth. It shades it and then it applies the Auto Smooth and Normals. Pretty good and I believe this actually works on multiple objects at the one time. So Camera Lock View, I have already shown you. Active Camera Depth of Field. Now what this essentially does is it drops down an empty and it pairs it to the camera. So if we actually go into the camera, you should see here that Depth of Field has been enabled and the focus on object is now the empty. And this is great for doing a focus puller. Now be careful, you need to have the active camera. Now if you want to check this, you can go to the scene properties, you can see here scene, and that's your active camera. Nice and quick, nice and easy. And we also have enable all in viewport. But one of the favorite things that I like is viewport hidden match. Now what does this mean exactly? So let's say for example, we hide the sphere inside of the outliner. 
And next time we go to render, it suddenly is back again because we forgot to disable it in the render engine. So what we can actually do is we can actually go to viewport hidden match. Now, if you watch the right hand side on outliner, you'll notice that it actually disables everything. Perfect. And this works over multiple objects. It essentially matches the render visibility. Now, it kind of works and vice versa. We can actually do this by disabled and rendered. So disabled and rendered is actually enabled. We can go to Haggis tools and we can go to disabled rendered match. And you'll notice that it brings absolutely everything back. And we have a few other things, disabled and viewport. Now, disabled and viewport and hidden from viewport are actually two separate things. So keep that in the back of your mind. We also have set holdout on selected. Now, this is brilliant when you're doing things like layers, composite and stuff like this. So let's say, for example, we select both of these objects. We can go to set holdout. We can then go to the object visibility and you can see here that the mask slash holdout is now active. Now, I did make a very quick button which will disable holdout on selected as well. So that'll bring everything back and it'll disable holdout in all of the objects that you have selected. So just covering some very quick tools in this menu, create collection folders and create collection all. So let's say, for example, I want to create a collection for every single element in the add menu. So all these menus here. So what I can do is go to create collection all and you'll notice that it's generated a whole bunch of collections. Now, the great thing about create collection folders is it actually writes a folder per collection name to wherever you store the Blender file. So for example, I'm inside of the desktop. I'm inside of Haggis tools. I can go to create collection folders. It'll automatically bring it up and you can see here all the folders that have a collection name. Now this can actually be used in several ways. So let's say for example, we just create 10 collections and we name this folder whatever. You can create the folders very quickly on the fly. Now that's just some of the basic functions in just one menu. The main thing here is actually copying location, rotation and scale and animation tools. And this is where I find you'll actually get the most value out of the add-on. So let's quickly clean up the scene. And let's say, for example, I want to copy the location of the sphere here. What I can do is I can actually use the Alt click menu and I can copy the location rotation scale. I can then select the object and I can paste the location here. And you'll notice that it automatically pastes it in. Perfect. Now, as an added bonus, we can actually paste location in keyframe. And this will automatically paste it and insert a keyframe. And we can do this for single individual channels, location, rotation, scale, or we can do it all in one. Now, while I'm here, you'll notice that we can actually toggle the face orientation. This is really handy if you want to check out that your polygons are in the correct direction. So as you'll notice here, we have a whole bunch of animation tools as well. Now, copy animation single user is fantastic. What this essentially does is it copies the animation data and then unlinks the data, which means we can manipulate it individually. So Let's quickly animate something like the cylinder. We have this amazing animation. We can select the object that we would like to copy the animation to. We can then select the target object. We can go to animation tools, copy animation, single user, and hit OK. And you'll now notice they both have the same animation. Because we actually unlinked it, we can just select something like this. And we now have two separate animation channels. Now, one of the benefits of using animation tools is we can actually go to calculate object paths and this will calculate the motion path perfect it'll give us a frame range and we can also take these off individually so we can go to animation tools clear the motion path for this object superb now quickly going over some of the other tools we can lock the selection so let's say for example we don't want to be able to select the sphere we can just quickly lock it and this means we can't select it in the viewport we also have unlock selection and all and that'll bring everything back for us we can also viewport toggle the names on and off of the object. So you can see here, the names are back. Another quick toggle is camera and light lock. Now when I'm using CAD data, generally the camera and lights get in the way. So being able to lock these are pretty handy. Another thing we can do is we can also set the display to wireframe and we can quickly toggle this back to textures. Now one of the additions is create a vertex name. Now what does this mean? What this essentially does is it selects the objects and it creates a vertex map with that name. So you can see this is called cylinder. We can now see that the vertex group is called cylinder as well. And this is good if you're doing bones, you can select a bone and then name the vertex group to that bone name. It comes in really handy. The exact same happens for the UV map as well. Name collection and move. Now 
I actually used this in production, it's part of the reason that I wrote it. So let's select the sphere and let's go to name collection and move. And you'll see here what I'll do is actually create a collection called sphere and I'll move the object into that collection. Nice and handy to be honest. And we have a few other things, collection move lights. What this does is it creates a collection and it moves all of the lights into that collection. And the exact same for collection move mesh. Now let me show you some really nice features as well. So let's quickly drop down the default cube and one of my favourite things is, let's say for example we go into edit mode and what we'll do is we'll just quickly select these top four points. We'll quickly go back into object mode and we have add empty to vertex. What this essentially does is it places an empty on the vertices. Perfect. Now we'll quickly delete this cube, we'll select these four empties and as you can see here we have add bones on selected. And what this will do is it will essentially add a bone on the selected objects. We now have four bones and I'm hoping you're starting to see the kind of benefits of these tools. Now just to quickly wrap everything up, we also have open working directory. You can see here the working directory is set on the desktop. This needs to be saved. The blend file has to be saved first. We also have open render directory. Now this actually has to be set in the output path, otherwise it will just open up where Blender installs. So just covering some of the system tools and console commands. We can install an add-on on one click. This just saves us getting into preferences. We also have things like save system info. Now this is actually part of Blender, but it's really good if you want to check what add-ons are installed, stuff like this. You can open an install directory, enter edit mode. We now have a toggle for this. So when you drop down an object, it will automatically go into edit mode. You can disable the splash screen and obviously you have open the UI window type that was shown. Now when it comes to console commands, I'm going to start building these out, I'm going to make them a lot better. So what we can do is we can toggle the system console, and let's say for example we want to see if an object has a holdout, we can go object has holdout, and you can see here that everything is actually false, nothing has a holdout. Now like I said, I'm going to build these out, I'm going to make them a little bit more efficient, I'm going to start doing things like print out locations and then export to CSV, but that'll come in a later update. And just to quickly wrap everything up, it's getting a little bit long, I do apologise. Let's say for example, we just quickly jump into sculpting mode. If you go to the sculpt menu, we have emulate three button mouse, and we can quickly toggle the face orientation. And that's pretty much Haggis tools. If you've got any questions, I'm available on Discord, you can grab me on Twitter or even YouTube for example. And I'm hoping to build these tools out further especially when I'm using them in production. The next job is a CAD job, not that you really care, but when you're using CAD data, your scene can become quite complicated. Anyway, do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you buy the product. Take care.